He's uh, originally from Pakistan. He has taught in Syria. He's taught in Pakistan. He's taught in China. He's been to Australia. He's been to New Zealand. So he's quite the world traveler, uh, but a delightful colleague. Uh, he's currently at uh, Yanqing uh, Institute of Technology, uh, and he is uh, doing research with respect to the One Belt, One Road uh, initiative. It's a Chinese initiative. It's a big deal in Asia. It's on the other side of the world from us, but uh, nevertheless, it's a very big uh, economic initiative. And so I'm going to turn the class over to, uh, and I call it Hashmi just because it's easy to say, but uh, please uh, be informal, ask questions, and he'll tell you a little bit more about uh, his relationship. He was uh, commenting about our uh, very nice uh, building here. Uh, he has uh, lectured, obviously, many times in China, and so have I. There are some differences in the classroom between China and uh, the United States. Um, he's quite the linguist. Uh, English is basically his third language. He speaks uh, Urdu, which I guess is his native language. He speaks uh, Mandarin Chinese, Arabic, Hindu, and a little bit of English. And so without further ado, I'm going to let uh, Dr. Hashmi uh, take, the, uh, take the floor, and uh, we'll have uh, a good meeting. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much, and uh, maybe you don't know uh, how much uh, Professor Taylor and I uh, are close friends. I can give you just an example. Yesterday, he came along, drive by himself to the airport and pick me. And not only this one, and then he took me to his home. So I'm living in his home. So I'm like his family. So I can say I owe a lot to this professor. And he is my mentor and he's my friend and he, we are like a family. Now, as far as my lecture is concerned, actually, you might have heard about the Second World War, right? The First World War. when. Uh, First World War and Second World War broke out. I think I was in, even not in a liquid farm, and none of you were born. And I don't know about Professor Taylor. I was born right after uh, World <laughs> yes. War II. I, I'm a but, baby boomer. But anyway, <laughs> you might have heard about the Marshall Plan, right? The Marshall so, Plan. the Marshall Plan. And now what we also heard about the rise and fall of Soviet Union. And I don't know these rise and fall and how it happened because at that time I was much young. I'm still young. And then I don't know how the United States of America become the world top economy. I just learned something from the books. But now I am I can see how China is going to be the b biggest economy. And the people are talking about that China is going to be rule the world. You can have a reservation, you can disagree. But people call it, it's a Chinese century. So I feel excited, and as an economist, I feel uh, China is a place, it's a real laboratory where economists, they can really observe how our economy goes through a different transactions. China was poor and it is developing and it's moving to develop. So for us, it's a really a laboratory as an economist to see how policymakers are coming up with the plans. So this one is another plan which will not only affect China, but it has a huge implications for the global economy. So uh, I don't know how much you know about China, but one belt, one road is the master plan 
actually initiated by the current president, Xi Jinping, in, back in um, 2013. Now, uh, this is the uh, plan is inked into the 13th five-year plan, which runs through 2016 to 2021. And to support the world by uh, one by one road, they have established AIB, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Do you know about this one? Uh, we talked a little bit about it as a third alternative to the World Bank and the World Trade Organization. That's true. So this is a Chinese initiative. It has Chinese capital. Right. And even England and France have joined the uh, yes. Asian Investment uh, Initiative. Actually, AIB has more than uh, 75 countries uh, founding members. America is not the member until now, though they invited America to join it. But as Professor Taylor said, AIB is a similar level, at, at least Chinese one, to bring this bank similar, equal to the World Bank. And I, I, I know it's not going to be only AIB. Chinese might be in the coming years will establish WGO similar as well as IMF. So these all institutions are in, in, in pipeline. But anyway, I'm moving with the AIB, I mean the, the BNR. So Basically, the main purpose for creating DRI is uh, creating a trade links you know, between uh, in the countries. And uh, until now, more than 65 countries are engaged in, in this project. And then uh, the main reason, another reason is it's connecting uh, almost the whole world except the northern part of the world. <laughs> You mean America, uh, Southern America. But you can see Europe, you can see Asia, Middle East, Africa, and beyond. And then the other part is the, to develop the western part of China. I don't know if you have seen the Chinese map. Did you see? The map. The map. Mm -hmm. Chinese map. It, it is like a chicken. I, I, I'm sorry to say, it looks like a chicken, but uh, uh, the western side is actually the tail tail, and it is uh, less developed uh, in comparison with the south and east and other, the coastal regions. So other reason is to uh, develop the western part. And you can stop me, you can ask me question in between, it doesn't matter, because Anyway, don't be like a Chinese, because I like Chinese students. You know the reason? You know why? Because they don't ask questions. <laughs> yes. So I hope you would ask questions. You can interrupt me. It doesn't matter. But you, you would ask questions wherever you feel clarification. OK. Now, in order to execute these uh, trading routes, they have two plans. One is connecting China by road, and the other is connecting China to those 65 countries by sea. And the, the, this side, this is we call the Silk Road uh, by road. So connecting China, uh, crossing from, uh, you can see here from uh, Xi'an City, and you know the Xi'an City, the silk, actually, the foreigners, they started entering into the China from Xi'an, and China was famous for the silk, and uh, it's still famous for the silk. And uh, Xi'an had been the capital, and had been a uh, capital for uh, at least three dynasties, so it's a very popular place. And it's going on, anyway, it, the, this road ends in the Poland, and you know the Poland, have you been to the Poland? No? Anybody been to Poland? Okay, next time I'll take you there. <laughs> uh, Poland is uh, in the middle of the Europe. Okay. On the other side, we have alternative uh, connecting 
bias C, which is very vital and important for Chinese. So it is starting from basically from the Kong, Fujian and the Guangzhou city, because they have a C, and it is going all around, uh, and then also same time ended are connected in Poland. So the idea is to connecting the both rules, one is by the road, the other is by the sea. In order uh, to connect these countries, they have established six economic corridors. And uh, you can see here, here, uh, where's my China-Pakistan economic corridor, and actually I'm from Pakistan. And uh, this is one of the corridor, and uh, for Chinese, this economic corridor is uh, very important. I will show you the data why it's very important. And uh, on the other side, uh, this is also a very important uh, corridor uh, for Chinese. Though others also, but at least because of the rule, because, and, and, and that's a, a China-Pakistan economic corridor is actually, a, it, it's related to the Silk Road. And the, the, this one is, <coughs> is the, the, the sea route. So anyway, going on further. Now why Chinese are developing this uh, Baton Road project? What is the real reason? There might be uh, many reasons. And we know the official version is China wants to promote global economy as well as promote the international trade by creating more linkages, creating more trade links and so on. So this is one Chinese official statement. On the other side, we know there is another reason and which is the real reason that why Chinese are very urgent in executing this plan. Uh, the reason is because of the overcapacity. Chinese, they have uh, compiled or produced oil, uh, iron and steel a huge amount, and uh, according to some data that oil and steel is much bigger than the entire production of European Union. So they need to dispose this entire, uh, you know, iron and steel. Now how you dispose it? You know, these things you cannot <coughs> use it. And the, those uh, manufacturers, they are in trouble. So you need to dispose, and the best way to dispose iron and steel is uh, creating more infrastructure. So they can bridges. use it, build more roads, and constructions, and uh, bridges, and, and hospitals, and airports, and so on, so they can uh, utilize this one. Uh, okay. One, one, I, I, yes. You mentioned uh, road linkages and sea linkages, but my understanding was that there was going to be uh, a very technologically advanced rail linkages. Well, through uh, Central Asia and so forth. It is. I, I will talk this one when I reach to the Pakistani corridor. Uh, it is. And, that's and true. railroads need a lot of steel. Yeah. Well, on the other side, far uh, fast train. Uh, actually, they are connecting uh, China 